Today, we're taking a deep dive into mobility, training, and progression essentials. I'm gonna reveal some of the most amazing tricks and hacks that we've discovered over the years that are gonna allow you to progress your mobility training. And I'm also gonna to talk to you about our amazing Friday Frenzy, where you can get the Mobility Masterclass for half price plus a ton of extras. It's a total of 85% discount. Uh, make sure you stick around to the end because I'm not only am I gonna answer your questions, but I'm gonna reveal some really good hacks to make sure that you guys level up your mobility and are constantly seeing progression. All that and more coming up. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hey everyone, in case we haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. I'm one of the co-founders of Unity Gym and one of the co-creators of the UMS, formerly the FMS, Unified Movement System, where we teach you how to nourish and move instead of diet and exercise. And I'm here again on my own today. So before we even start, I'm gonna ask for as much interaction from you guys as possible. This show is gonna be really, really short if I don't have any interaction. So to start with, sing out, let me know where you guys are at and let me know what you wanna know, what questions you want answered in this show. I'll make sure, excuse me, I've got some of my breakfast in my teeth. I'll make sure that I um, get all your questions answered. So please, please sing out. The more questions I get, the better this show's going to be. Um, it's way harder for me. You wouldn't believe how, uh, how bloody um, hard this is to do <laughs> when you don't have someone else to bounce ideas off. So let's, uh, let's dive in. Look, the first thing I want to do is I want to say for you guys, we're talking all about mobility this week. If you guys haven't, if you're watching and you haven't downloaded our flexibility blueprint, our fleet free flexibility bl blueprint and joined our email list, then you're really missing out because we give away so much free content and it all starts with that flexibility blueprint. You can get a link in the description. So jump on and, uh, and grab it. Oh, the other thing I want to talk about is this morning we uh, we uploaded a, a front splits tutorial video. So if you haven't had a look at that yet, go and check that out after the show. And if you have had a look at it, please um, hit me up with any of the questions that you have on that uh, video because it's a really good tutorial. There's some great exercises in there to help you guys really level up your front splits. So I want to make sure that you guys go and have a look at that. Um, there's three really key uh, topics that we talked about in that show. We talked about uh, warming up for the front splits, some beginner progressions, and some advanced progressions. So if you've got any questions about that, hit me up. But in this show, let me just double check my notes. I've got a, I've, I've got a real checklist here to make sure that I get through um, all of this stuff here. So... What I want to talk to you guys about today, we've been talking about mobility all this week. Now, next week, we've definitely had the, uh, hey, Kyle, how you doing, brother? Um, we've definitely had an overwhelming response for people that want to learn about uh, how to stabilize the shoulders and create bulletproof shoulders. And I can tell you right now, I am an absolute expert at this, not just because I've been a personal trainer now for 16 years and I've helped thousands of people to rehabilitate shoulder injuries, but also to condition their shoulders to superhuman levels. But I have recently rehabilitated myself a slap tear in the right shoulder and a torn supraspinatus and a bunch of other nasty stuff. So next week, I'm going to be going all through the strategy that you need about that. But today, this week, we've been talking about mobility. We've been talking about uh, middle splits, pancake, front splits. And today we're going to bring it all in for a landing. We're going to talk about progressing and using progressive overload for flexibility and mobility training. And this is something that if you get right, you are going to see continued success. Get it wrong. You're going to be banging your head against the wall, wondering why you still can't touch your toes or you still can't do a pancake after you've been training for six months or a year. It's one of the most frustrating things. And progressive overload, if you don't understand what it is, it's basically... <clears throat> Um, Hasnam, I'm going to uh, get to your questions soon. Keep them coming, please, guys. I want to know all the questions. Once I see all the questions there, I'll be able to answer them. But I'm just going to say quickly, Hasnam, can you just um, elaborate on that, bro? How to fix rounded hip? That doesn't make much sense to me. Can you please give me a, a more detailed description of your question that you want answered? So using progressive overload, the, basically the idea is that uh, you're doing something it delivers a result for you, and then you plateau, and bef well, before you plateau, you make it a little bit harder, or you progress with what you're doing to continually challenge yourself and continue seeing 
results. See, what you do now that delivers a result for you won't deliver a result for you in about six weeks time. It's only going to, that, that initial adaptation that happens, basically our bodies respond, all life responds to stress. So the, the, a really good way to, um, to understand this is if there's a sapling, if there's a little tree here and the sunlight is shining down on it, it's going to grow up towards the sun. But if the, as the sun changes, let's say another tree grows over the top um, and now all of a sudden this tree is in the shade and where the sun was shining down on the tree here, now the sun's shining down here. What the tree is going to do is it's going to grow to where that sunlight is and then it'll continue growing there. But once it hits that sunlight, it's it's just going to grow towards the sunlight there. If, this, if another tree came over the top of it and the sunlight was now coming down here, so all this area was in shade, the tree will adapt again. And you can see that in nature. You can see trees like old trees that have grown to where the sunlight is. But once they hit that spot where the sunlight is, they stop adapting and they start just growing in a straight line. The same thing happens to our body. If we looked at, if you turned it this way and if you said this was where we are now and we want to increase our flexibility then what we do is we have to create a stress stimulus that causes our body to adapt to it and become more flexible and we level up we become more flexible but we that now become adapted to that new stimulus and so if we don't use progressive overload we stop getting more and more flexible so <clears throat> what I want to talk to you guys about now is what we use in our flexibility essentials mini course it's part of the strength and flexibility essentials mini course um, that we have and it's basically it's the four principles of progressive overload that are specific to flexibility that are unique they're, they're not the same as strength in strength training there's different principles and they are intensity volume complexity and rest time so those are the four real variables that you have excuse me that's something in my we've got renovations going on in the gym here and a bit of dust just flew my so those are the four variables that you have to work with. And um, if you understand how to manipulate them, you're going to achieve amazing results. So intensity refers to um, basically how intense what you're doing is. So there's, there's different ways you can manipulate intensity. If you're doing loaded mobility, if you're doing loaded uh, flexibility training, so you're using an external force to put the muscles under strain, um, for example, with the pancake, um, the loaded pancake or the loaded hamstring stretches that you would have seen us talking about um, this week, or even with the middle splits, the, uh, the loaded middle splits that we were doing, um, you can increase the intensity by adding more weight um, to the movement. So that's an example of increasing intensity. Volume refers to the amount of time you hold a stretch for or the amount of sets that you do of a stretch or the amount of different exercises that you do on one specific muscle group in a workout. So that's how you manipulate volume. And then, um, I've lost my train of thought here. Uh, complexity is the difficulty of the movements that you're doing. So how challenging are the movements that you're, uh, that you're doing? And then the last one is, is rest. So rest is uh, basically how much rest you're taking um, between the uh, the workouts that you're doing. So guys, I can see uh, that we've got a bunch more viewers on now. Um, hey everyone, I just want to get you guys to give me a quick shout out. Let me know where you're watching from and uh, let me know your questions. Questions about progressing flexibility. That's what I'm here for today. The more engagement that I get from you guys, the better this show is going to be. Otherwise, I'm just talking to the camera myself and looking at my notes here. So I'm going to get into your questions. Uh, questions soon. I can see we've got a good question from House, but please, all of you guys that are watching, hit me up with your questions in the comments and I'll answer them all in this show. So let's, uh, let's work through those lists. Let's have a look at intensity. So a really good way to understand intensity with a uh, pancake, for example, when I started my pancake training, um, what I started with was uh, Grabbing onto, if you watch the pancake tutorial, the, the, and if you haven't watched it, go back and watch it because it's an unbelievable tutorial for pancake training that we uploaded just a couple of days ago. So I started with that beginner progression where I'm sitting upright, I've got my legs open, I'm grabbing, um, <clears throat> uh, I'm grabbing onto a pole in front of me, a fixed object, and I'm pulling my body forward towards the pole to create an anterior pelvic tilt and increase the intensity with each rep as I do it to, uh, to increase my flexibility in my adductors and my hamstrings. 
After a certain period of time, that specific exercise does two-fifths of bugger all for me. Now I get absolutely nothing out of it. It does nothing for me because my, my flexibility has gone so far beyond that point. So what I've done from there is you start going into some loaded pancake where I now, now that I can sit up beyond the vertical position and I can lean forward, I can now put some weight on my back and I can do a progressive loaded pancake. So that's an example of increasing intensity with the pancake. Um, say for the middle splits, again, um, as a beginner at the most basic level, doing a Cossack squat from side to side and a standing active uh, middle splits are a really good way to get started with your middle splits training. So the Cossack squat side to side uh, creates flexibility just on one side without having to, uh, so it's easier on the central nervous system because you're not stretching muscles on both sides of the hips at the same time. And the standing, the active middle splits where you're just standing there is a very controlled movement because your feet aren't sliding out. And then to progress that, I can put my, um, feet onto uh, tumble track sliders to allow them to uh, to allow my feet to slide out. So I'm actually crossing over now that I described this, I'm also crossing into the complexity um, thing here because when we talk about increasing complexity, we talk about making movements more challenging. So a more so doing an active middle splits is just standing there with my feet on the ground, but once I get the tumble track sliders under and now my feet are trying to slide out and I'm having to fight that, that's increasing the complexity by adding um, more complexity to it basically. Um, a way of increasing the complexity with a Cossack squat is to go into a, th uh, a Cossack squat rotation. So this is another movement that we have in the uh, mobility masterclass where, so a Cossack squat, I'm just going down to the side, whereas a Cossack squat rotation, if you know what a Cossack squat is, when I squat down to one side and then I rotate towards the front leg, that adds complexity because now I'm not just doing a fixed plane of motion with my Cossack squat, I'm now adding um, a second plane of motion. So instead of just moving down to the side in the frontal plane, I'm now moving in the transverse plane as well to create, uh, to develop flexibility and mobility through a wide range of angles. So um, I've crossed over into two things there. I've, I've talked now about uh, intensity and about complexity. So if I move more into complexity, um, complexity is something that as you increase your flexibility, you have to do. You have to start um, moving into more complex movements. And it's probably, um, the intensity and the complexity are probably the two things that beginners stuff up the most, whereas they make their stretches too intense and uh, go to that point of pain that we've spoken about a lot this week, where you cross into that point of pain and you stifle your progress, or they go too complex, where they, they you know, you're looking at YouTube videos and you're thinking, oh, wow, I'm going to uh, do what the guys are doing on the video today, but that's far beyond you. And that's something that is really going to mess you up as well, because you need to, you know, there's a, there's a certain, you know, ladder of progression that you have to follow. And if you're somebody that's really, really stiff and tight, you don't want to be doing as complex stretching as someone like I would be doing. And you need to understand what the more basic progressions are going to be to help you to get to where you, you know, where you're going. So the next variable that we want to talk about is volume and volume refers to as I said, there's three things. There's three things that you want to manipulate with volume. And the first one is the amount of time that you hold a stretch for. So when you, or the amount of reps that you do on a stretch. So when you start, you, um, the, the level of discomfort that you feel is, is quite intense for a lot of people. A lot of people find it very hard to hold a stretch for more than 30 seconds. Even when I'm, um, even when I'm, uh, you know, starting a new stretching program, um, I might have in my variables that I want to hold uh, a certain stretch for one to two minutes. And when I start the program, it, it'll be one to two minute stretch for three to five sets. And when I start, I'll do three sets of one minute. And then what I'll usually do is I'll increase the sets until I get up to five sets. And then I'll start to increase the amount of time that I hold each stretch for in each 
uh, in each set. So that's one way of manipulating volume is the amount of time that you hold a stretch for. The next one that I just said is also the amount of sets that you do on any specific exercise. And then the next one is the amount of different exercises that you do on one muscle group. And these are all variables that you need to understand how to play around with. When you learn how to bring all of this together, it really, really makes a difference. And then the last variable that we talk about is the, um, the rest variable. So it's how much rest you take between stretching sessions. Now, there's so many different ways that you can manipulate this. You can do uh, really big stretching sessions only maybe uh, once a week on each specific movement, like you could stretch for an hour and a half on one movement and then not do it for a whole week as long as you do mobility training on every other day, which I'll talk about in a sec if you don't understand what that is. And then uh, on, on other programs you can stretch uh, the same uh, routine twice a week on the same muscle group. Sometimes I'm doing at the moment, I'm really doubling down on my front splits, so I'm doing front splits training three times a week. Then you can also do double day training, so where you can do the same muscle group in the morning and in the evening. Um, there's so many different ways that you can manipulate the rest uh, variable, and there's no right and wrong, there's no... Um, you know, hard and fastened rule, there's just variables. And that's what progressive overload is. That's what periodization is. It's, it's messing around with these variables. And these are things um, uh, that, you know, we, we go really deep into in our mobility masterclass, the way that we manipulate all of these different variables through um, periodization and progressive overload to see consistent results with people. So, um, and if you didn't know what the difference between flexibility and mobility is, flexibility is when you're doing a workout for increasing your flexibility. It's at a much higher level of intensity than mobility. Often you need a lot of rest afterwards. And mobility training is where you're just taking your joints through their full range of motion, much more gentle. It's basically working your current range of motion, whereas flexibility is trying to increase your current range of motion. And there's lots of different types of flexibility training. There's lots of different types of mobility training as well, but with mobility, it's more just an umbrella term for taking your joints through their full range of motion. So. What I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna have to look at my notes again to see what else uh, I need to talk about in this show, but I'm going to jump into uh, some questions now. So uh, I can see uh, we've got a couple of questions here, but if any of you guys have got questions on anything to do with flexibility, progressing flexibility, or the front splits, anything that we've um, talked about this week, uh, put them in the comments now and I'll answer them. So let's have a look. Uh, Has Nam, thanks for tuning in by the way, brother. So you're saying uh, you were doing splits for six years, and had an injury in your hip. Uh, your left hip is uh, go inside like knee claps and my right hip turn out uh, pine, walk, run, jump. Sorry, brother, I, I can, I'm guessing that English isn't your first language, so I'm having to just try to decipher this. Um, so you're saying that you're doing a split fit, so how to fix a rounded hip. Um, Man, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, Hass, but I'm, I'm struggling to understand exactly what your question is. Yanni, I can see that you're tuned in here, um, writing, commenting as Unity Jim. Um, can you help me to try to understand what this, uh, what this question is? Um, it's a little bit hard for me to, um, to decipher. So, um, Yanni, if you can help me to understand that, or Hass, if you can clarify a bit more. Um, Doing the splits for six years and had an injury in your left hip. Listen, look f from what I look from what I understand. What I'm going to say is one of the first things is if you've um, yeah if you're feeling pain when you do a stretch and you've had an injury for for years. So what's most likely happened is um, just hang it up, Richie. Um, so what's most likely happened is that you've when you've uh, ca caused an injury, you've created uh, scar tissue. So it was not created scar tissue, there's scar tissue left over from it. And when there's scar tissue or um, any kind of like, uh, like um, you'll sometimes you'll get, um, uh, God, I've, I've been um, thrown off by the phone calling. Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, 
Muscle adhesion. Sorry, you get muscle adhesion. So you cause an injury, you you tear a muscle, um, you do micro tears, whatever it is, and you can develop muscle adhesions. And muscle adhesions are like where the muscles start to stick together. The fat. So muscles are like we've got muscles like interlacing over each other, and they all pull in different directions and in different sequences to create all these movements in our body. And what happens sometimes after injury is that you. Um, uh, you get muscle adhesions where they stick together, where the fascia is stuck on each other. And then when you try and stretch, all the stretching in the world isn't going to undo those. Unfortunately, sometimes what you need to do is either self myofascial release with a physio ball or a foam roller, or even better is to go and see uh, a practitioner, like a great sports uh, masseuse or a physiotherapist. And I'd highly recommend that that would be your um, first point of call that you go and get a sports massage and see if that's going to help you and then you need to start doing um, exploring your pain with a physio ball and with a, a rumble roller or a foam roller to try and roll those areas out um, so yeah that's that's what I'd be doing uh, and that's what I can decipher from your question um, Yanni is saying that you may have developed tendinopathy as well. So tendinopathy is when uh, it goes past tendinitis. So tendinitis is when your tendons become inflamed. It's the onset of tendinopathy. But when you get to the stage of tendinopathy, you've done some serious damage to the tendons. You you damage the um, you damage the tendons on a cellular level, and that takes a lot of work to um, rehabilitate. It's not just rest. It's not just massage. It's not just um, stretching. You then have to develop develop strength again by starting with isometric load. So that might be something that you need to explore as well. You need to um, put the muscles under isometric load and it depends on which muscles they are. If it's doing the front splits, it's either going to be putting the uh, hip flexors or the hamstrings under isometric load. And if it's doing the middle splits, it's going to be putting the adductors under isometric load. I recently tore uh, some of the adductors, um, which are the muscles on the inside of my legs, doing uh, a loaded butterfly. Uh, and it's me about six weeks or so to rehabilitate but um, it was no problem because I know what I'm doing and through getting one or two physical treatments on it um, a little bit of massage a bit of ART active release technique and then through doing some ice just very gentle isometric loading using using progression so talking about increasing via using the intensity continuum which means that when I started, so I can do the full middle splits, but when I started doing isometric load, I started with my legs uh, up here. So it was a very light load. And then I would gradually increase the intensity by gradually bringing my legs further apart. The further apart my legs got, the more intense the load got. And then after I could get down to here again, I increased the complexity by going onto tumble track sliders. And, but starting back up here. And then I would increase the intensity with the tumble track sliders by slowly going out. But I've also increased the complexity because now having the tumble track sliders under my feet, it now makes it much, much harder for me to stop my feet from sliding out. So that's a really good example of using uh, intensity and complexity to increase the difficulty of stretching that I was doing, but talking about it specifically for how to rehabilitate an injury. And I hope that um, answers your question there, Hass. So let's move on. Um, KBD, I think that is you, Kyle. Kyle from Wisconsin. Welcome, brother. Um, so you're in phase one. How would you start incorporating these routines in your schedule? It's a good question, man. And we get this question asked a lot. Like we've got so much content and um, a lot of people, you know, purchase a couple of our programs and then they go, oh my God, how do I put this all together? Everything has a place. And um, the place, to, like the way that you need to get started is that you basically need to just start with a routine. So the number one thing is that you need to be developing the habit of doing the UMS program, doing phase one every day, and you just get into the habit. And then once you've got the habit and you feel that you can add an extra 10 or 15 minutes a day, the, the question needs to be, um, this is my goal. I want to get better at this. What should I add into it? So your question there, how would you start incorporating these routines into your schedule? For you, because you've got access, because you're one of our online uh, members, 
what you need to be doing is you just need to be doing the program because within the UMS program, you've got strength and flexibility and we train you guys to do one set of strength training and one set of flexibility training. So that's all you need to be doing for the time being. And you just need to develop that habit. Once you've got that habit, you wanna add a little bit more or you wanna take it up a level, then ask us, how do I go to this next stage? And then we'll help coach you on how to uh, get to that next stage. Hope that answers your question, brother. Now, guys, I've uh, I've got to um, shoot through. I've got my uh, my next session that I have to do now. So the last thing I want to finish off with is talking about the Friday frenzy that we've got uh, starting today. There's going to be a, Yanni's email is going to be coming out in about half an hour from now with his uh, daily blog talking about this show. And for this week, uh, for the next until Monday. At at 11.59 a.m. Pacific time, you can get our Mobility Masterclass, which is the best program out there for you guys to develop the middle splits, the front splits, the pancake, and the back bridge. We've got multiple progressions, periodized programs, so multiple different programs to take you from beginner right through to advance on those specific movements. For anyone that's got the 18 minute stretching routine, this is the way that you progress. The 18 minute routine is designed to get you from A to B, and the Mobility Masterclass is designed to take you from B to Z. So it really is gonna uh, build on what you've got. And even if you don't have the 18 minute routine, but you really want to nail those any of those four movements, the middle splits, front splits, pancake, or back bridge, this program has everything that you need. It's really amazing. And it comes in a bundle. As always, we've got a, a ton of extras in there. It's an 85% discount. So if you've never got one of our programs before, and you're still a bit skeptical, go and have a look at our Google reviews. You're going to see some uh, amazing reviews on there about what we do. And uh, we have a 30 day money back guarantee with everything that we do. So if you don't like it, we'll give you your money back within the first 30 days. But check out our emails. If you're not on our email database, guys, what are you doing? Download the flexibility blueprint so you get these emails from us. And um, besides that, I will see you guys all next week. It's Friday here in Australia, so this is a sign off for me. And next week, I am gonna give you guys an amazing week of shoulder rehabilitation and bulletproofing. So not just rehab, but how to bulletproof your shoulders for weightlifting and calisthenics. We're gonna do a whole week on it. I'm gonna show you from beginner right through to advanced, full routines. I'm gonna take you out on the gym floor because um, we don't have Yanni here, so I'm gonna have to do something that stops me just talking to the camera. And I'm gonna take you out on the gym floor and give you guys some amazing stuff. Hope you guys got something good out of that show, and uh, I will see you all next week. Have a great weekend health is about performance not just body image you better be willing to accept what you're gonna have to do to get there we'll start focusing on movement goals strength goals flexibility goals. When you nail that skill it's there forever the body image goal doesn't get you that it's far. the consistency and frequency that's gonna get you there it's not the intensity there's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.